Hi everyone, I'm Terabe from Sumitomo Corporation. Uh, let us start our talk on collision free route planning of our urban air mobility with the quantum maneuver. Here are three members. First is Mr. Habak from Tohoku University. He is leading the quantum implementation. Second is Daniel, the head of international implementation at OneSky. He is leading connecting quantum optimization with the air mobility control system. And me, Terabe, the head of quantum transformation project at Smithomo Corporation and leading this project. This technical challenge was done in the Quantum Sky project. In this project, we will create a world in which hundreds of thousands of air mobility vehicles will fly at high speed and safely in 2030X through ultra-fast optimization technology using quantum computers. This is a kind of long-term perspective that only quantum computing can provide. Let me briefly introduce Sumito Corporation and our motivation. We are a conglomerate company with over 900 consolidated companies. We have a variety of business, from metal to transportation, power, media, digital, and more. I believe these fields could be a good test bed for quantum computing. So we started the quantum transformation QX project, a crossover of quantum computing with these business fields from underground to space. In addition to today's quantum sky project, we have a number of other initi initiatives like smart city and energy management. If you are interested in any of these, please contact me. Okay, I will now hand over the button to Daniel from Fast Sky. Thanks. Hi, my name is Daniel Honecker, and I'm the head of international implementation from OneSky. Today, I'd like to talk to you about uh, unmanned traffic management and how we are using advanced techniques of quantum annealing to advance the routing and scheduling solution. So many of us, I think, are aware of the challenges uh, that are facing the airspace uh, community when it comes to the integration of unmanned systems into the national airspace. Well, we expect exponential growth in the, this uh, number of uh, operations daily uh, in the coming years. And the challenge is that traditional air traffic management is not well suited to deal with these challenges. In particular, the, the volume of operations uh, just simply will exceed the capacity of traditional air traffic management. In addition, these operations happen at lower altitudes where there is not existing infrastructure to surveil or to track these entities. Radars are pointed too high, but also the uh, operations and the, the platforms are too small to detect. Therefore, we need a digital system, uh, meaning highly autonomous system, to accommodate these, these multiple new uh, operation types. So this is what unmanned traffic management is meant to do. It's a system of systems, so many, many providers of UTM services uh, can work collaboratively to act as the gateway for the UAS operators and UAM operators into the national airspace. And we believe at OneSky, we are uniquely positioned to handle this, these new challenges. We spun out of our parent company, AGI, about two years ago, um, where AGI has a 30 plus year history of providing software solutions for the aerospace and defense industries. Uh, along with uh, OneSky, Two other companies were spun out, Comstock, who, faces, uh, who focuses on space traffic management, but also Cesium, who focuses on 3D geospatial visualization for the web. Now, we were able to borrow all of these best of breed technologies to, to put forward what we believe is a global UTM standard. And over the last six plus years of, of work, uh, we've participated in numerous domestic and international projects, which are meant to uh, work on these UTM standards and services. Uh, as well as working on the integration effort between UTM and traditional air traffic management. And finally, also to develop services which increase the safety of beyond visual line of sight operations. Now to set up the problem that we are trying to solve with this routing and scheduling solution, uh, I wanna explain the FAA CONOPS on how 
in the early phases, these UAM or urban air mobility vehicles, think air taxis, cargo movers, et cetera, how they will be integrated into the national airspace. And that is through fixed corridors of airspace above 400 feet, which connect to uh, landing pads, uh, which are called vertiports. Now in, in the near term, these vertiports will be things like uh, helicopter landing pads, um, uh, positioned at places like airports, as you can see here. Um, but in the future, industry will provide uh, the infrastructure uh, for these vertiports for privately owned and operated um, vertiport operators. So what you can see here is a, a visualization of the complex urban environment in which these operations will occur, uh, allowing for two-way travel along these corridors to and from the vertiports as modeled by the yellow cylinders. Um, and we uh, help to model and manage the safe operation of these vehicles through this airspace structure. Now, again, what you can see there is the low level airspace is incredibly complex uh, and, and provides unique challenges uh, that traditional air traffic management doesn't have to deal with. So obviously buildings and terrain are one factor, but you also have to consider things like micro scale weather and wind effects, uh, the noise impacts of these vehicles and how that impacts users on the ground. Um, things like uh, GNSS urban canyoning effects or RF shadowing. All of these things must be considered, uh, and more importantly, we must be able to develop routes and schedules that take into effect this dynamic environment. Now this here, example here shows how we have begun to really model up that complex airspace environment. Now this was done during that Singapore project where we have, um, again, loaded in basic static airspace information that uh, everyone needs to consider, like control airspaces, keep out zones, and so forth. But then we layer in dynamic constraints such as AIS data, ship tracking data. You can see that there in yellow. Also, you can see the weather has been incorporated, and where there is high intensity storms, we bound that as a constraint in our system. So we bound that as a, a four dimensional volume, which is then considered during the routing and scheduling problem. And this example here shows some initial work that we did in Singapore to prototype routing and scheduling uh, for a package delivery network. Now you can see the black pins there represent the takeoff and landing locations for these operations. And the blue lines represent the corridors which connect takeoff and landing locations. Now by submitting randomized customer demands into our routing and scheduling algorithm, we were able to safely separate these operations so that they could uh, safely uh, accomplish their mission. Now, however, we did this with traditional methods where it was essentially a first come first serve approach. Any operation that could not be accommodated uh, due to separation constraints with other operations would be simply delayed in time until a time that it could safely navigate the network. You can see the results here in red. You get a, a very modest uh, density of traffic in the network. And that's where the work with Tohoku University and Sumitomo has picked up. By working with quantum annealing, uh, so far initial results have shown significant improvement in the airspace density uh, or the operation density that can be uh, accomplished uh, in the same network. So you can see a significant, more uh, significantly larger number of operations are accommodated. Um, at all still while maintaining se safe separation, uh, not only from each other, but also from constraints such as buildings, weather, and so forth. And with that, I'll hand it over to Havasan uh, to talk more about some of these excellent advancements. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Uh, my name is Renichiro Haba. Uh, I will talk about the uh, technical side of our project. Okay, first, uh, I will introduce quantum annealing. Uh, quantum annealing is a heuristic algorithm for solving a combinatorial problem. Uh, in the annealing process, uh, quantum annealing tries to find the ground state of Ising model. Uh, as you can see, uh, by quantum effects, uh, every, uh, each qubit has superpositional states. 
And as time goes, uh, these states are fixed into one spin and we can get as the solution. We can get them as the solution. Okay, uh, now, now we'll talk about root planning of UAMs. Uh, we will plan a flight path for a fleet of aircrafts, uh, ensuring safety at the same time on an air network. Uh, UAM stands for Urban Air Mobility, and the, it is the technology, a promising tra transportation technology to carry cargo or people in lower altitude. An air network is comprised of takeoff or landing ports in the ground and corridors connecting them in the air. Uh, okay. Then we have customer requests. Uh, customer, customers' requests include uh, source and destination and desirable start time and uh, latest allowable start time. From this information, uh, operators have to plan a flight path for each request in advance. Uh, for making a flight pass, a uh, uh, pass uh, is, is a short pass and safe pass is desirable. Uh, why short? Uh, that is to reduce the flight time or to open the airspace because longer routes uh, occupy the airspace. And at the same time, we have to ensure safety of the routes. Uh, we can do it by uh, strategic deconfliction. Uh, strate strategic deconfliction is to deconflict uh, the aircraft's operation in the airspace. In the early operation concepts by NASA, uh, flight pads are designed in advance and uh, ensuring to have no latent conflicts with other flights. And recent market studies by NASA shows as many as 500 million flights a year are expected by 2030. So that causes heavy congestion in the air and uh, that causes finally a significant delays of flights. A major challenge is planning routes in the real time uh, while preventing delays or making uh, routes short. Now I will talk about our method. Uh, we, will, we propose an algorithm to find flight routes uh, for dynamically updated requests. Uh, for every 30 seconds, uh, we're gonna find safe routes for as many requests as possible. Uh, here's a flow uh, of an algorithm. Uh, first, obtain requests at time t, and then generate candidate routes uh, multiple candidate routes. And then uh, we're going to select uh, uh, one of the routes by optimization. And if, if, the, route's if the route is fine, uh, uh, flights are scheduled with the select routes. Uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the right figure shows uh, route selection. Uh, we, we have uh, three candidate routes in this figure and uh, each route, uh, uh, two of the routes have, may have a conflict between them. Uh, okay, from these candidate routes, we gonna, uh, we're gonna find one uh, route. So how to select the routes uh, means uh, is optimization problem for us. So, so next, we're gonna express our problem with optimization problem. Okay. Each optimization outputs, uh, as I said, the selection of routes. So now we have route planning problem uh, in this way. Uh, as an input, we have candidate routes. And as output, uh, output is selection of routes. Uh, as objectives, uh, uh, routes, uh, should be shortest as possible to reduce uh, 
congestion in, in airspace. And next objective is to approve uh, many flights, uh, many requests. Uh, that means uh, in order to uh, open ports for next future requests, because uh, many aircrafts, aircrafts try to fly up from ports. So we have to open uh, these ports. Uh, the constraints is the uh, strategic deconfliction, uh, as I said. Okay, so next uh, we have route planning problem and we will reduce it to maximum weighted independent set problem. Uh, this is a well-known graph problem, uh, how to solve optimally fast. Uh, maximum weighted independent set problem uh, have, have an input, uh, a weighted graph, and they output, uh, it outputs independent set of G uh, with maximum uh, total weight. Okay. Uh, as you can see left side of figure, uh, we have uh, this graph, uh, consider we have this graph as an input and first output is not, uh, is not feasible because it's, uh, these points are not independent. Uh, they are connected with edge. So this is a not a good solution. Okay. Uh, the middle one is, uh, uh, is uh, mid, uh, middle one's independent set is uh, horse, but uh, weight is not maximum. And the final output uh, is the optimal solution with maximum total weights. Uh, it is known there are no polynomial algorithm to exactly find a maximum weighted independent set for general graph. Okay, I'm gonna talk about how to reduce our problem to maximum weighted independent set problem in this, uh, instances. Okay, uh, first, uh, first of all, we gonna generate a graph from uh, these flights information. Okay. Uh, first, uh, we're gonna add vertices uh, corresponding to each route. You, as you can see, there are three nodes for each request. And then uh, we make a click uh, for the same requests by connecting them, uh, connecting all two, two of them. Uh, uh, this, this means, uh, we are choosing, choosing at most one route for each request. Okay. And then we're gonna remove uh, vertices if, if they have conflicts with active flights. Uh, okay, this, uh, this means the confliction of active flights. And then we're gonna add edges between any two vertices that have conflicts with each other flights. Uh, that is uh, the deconfliction of uh, between requests. Okay. Then uh, finally, we gonna we gonna set uh, weight for graph. Uh, we're gonna use a closeness to shortest uh, matrix as a weight, uh, as you can see. Uh, if the root is shortest, uh, weight is set to one, and if the roots have um, have, have detours uh, or something, uh, weights are uh, uh, smaller than one. Okay. N okay. Now they, uh, now we have, uh, now, uh, now the safety of roots are ensured if independency constraints holds, as you can see. Okay. We, I'm gonna talk about uh, the results. We simulated our algorithm on a Singapore network. Uh, here's a, a customer request samples, uh, five to 50 requests for uh, uh, coming uh, for every 30 seconds. And for each request, we're gonna give five candidate routes and source and destinations are chosen ran uh, randomly. 
uh, total time of simulation is uh, 3,500 seconds. And we're going to optimize them uh, for every 30 seconds. As a solver to solve weighted maximum independent set problem, we gonna we can use D-wave advantage or Gurobi. Uh, Gurobi is a strong classical solver to get optimal solution uh, by classical way, and greedy algorithm is also uh, the way to get solution. Okay. Uh, D-Wave's machine setting is uh, like this way, and uh, annual time set to one microseconds, and number of time uh, of annealing is set to 500. Okay, here's the results. Uh, left figure shows the total number of approved flights. Uh, uh, the, the x axis shows number of requests. Uh, um, blue and red and green line shows uh, the results of GOB, QA, and Greedy, respectively. Uh, and orange line shows uh, prototype methods, and it is not optimizing. So, as you can see, by optimizing um, the total number of uh, approved flights increased. Uh, than uh, prototype methods. And right, uh, right side of figure shows um, mean number of active aircrafts. Uh, yeah. This is uh, also, as you can see, uh, by optimizing, uh, we can uh, fly many aircrafts, uh, more aircrafts than prototype methods. And at the same time, as you can see, uh, there are not much difference between GOV or QA or Greedy. Uh, that is because they are solving um, almost optimally in, for, for each optimization. So we're going to uh, compare these solvers. Uh, we benchmark time to solution benchmark uh, to evaluate the performance of quantum annealing. Uh, shown this way. Uh, TTS uh, represents the, the estimated time to obtain the optimal solution with probability P. And, uh, uh, sorry, we wrap up. Okay. Uh, here is a uh, result of solvable comparison and uh, red circle is the result of quantum annealing with annealing time, and green and blue uh, circle and square shows the results of GOV and greedy respectively. And as you can see, quantum annealing outperforms uh, this classical solver for large large size of problem. And uh, yeah, however, uh, if we consider QPU time. For QA, uh, TTS performance is not good as uh, greedy or QOB. QOB. Uh, here's the discussion. Uh, quantum annealing outperformed other classical solvers for large problem size. Uh, uh, for small problem size, we have been uh, practically experienced poor, poor optimization performance with D-Wave advantage system uh, for some unknown reason. Uh, we assume that that is the reason why TTS performance of quantum annealing turned worse for smaller problems. And also we expect longer time to solution will be needed for large size of problem uh, with more than 40 or 50 variables. Okay. Okay, finally, uh, as a wrap up, we introduced a new algorithm to plan flight paths for quality customer requests. and uh, we show the effectiveness of our algorithm by virtual simulation in Singapore. Uh, although there are no significant performance superiority among these existing solvers, but D-Wave quantum annealers is, uh, is comparable with classical solvers. Uh, we hope future development of quantum devices and we keep exploring the 
real world application. Uh, thank you so much.